to this tutorial on building a lower third from scratch. This is part two. In the first tutorial, we created this lower third graphic that has a shiny flare that runs across and then kind of disappears, and then the whole bar fades in and out. So what we're going to do is take what we've made and change up a couple little things. And first, we're just deleting this rectangle gradient. So that we have just the line and the flare. And uh, next we're going to learn about particles. So the idea here is you can use a particle generator or I'm sorry a particle emitter and we have um, the ability to make an object and make copies of the object that move in the direction that you specify at different speeds and you can make them fade in and out over time and scale in and out over time. So um, why don't we just get started with one and draw a circle. So this is going to be the initial object that we're going to emit. And uh, we're going to modify it a bit to, to make it look a little bit um, more interesting. So if we change the fill mode to gradient and we're going to make it a, a totally white to black gradient. Um, so selecting the color, we'll just make one end white and one end black and then we're going to take this and change the gradient type to radial so it'll be kind of circular and we're going to change our y in and out points start and end so that it kind of fades out at the edges looks more like a sphere a sphere so um, now that we have the circle we're going to hover over this and it says create a particle emitter and the key command for this is just hitting the E key. So I'm going to hit E and let's take a look in the emitter. So if you if you look um, this bottom layer is no longer active. It, it's hidden. So um, this is the initial object that we've made. And then in the emitter if we go into the emitter and then look in the emitter properties in the inspector um, this is the default that a new emitter starts out at and if you note when we created the emitter it put it at that point in time so I'm going to drag this to the very beginning of the sequence note that the uh, the hidden circle did not drag it doesn't really matter where this is in time uh, it's not going to affect how the emitter behaves but we'll drag that also to the front and let's make it so that this emitter emits for the duration of this sequence Okay, so now that we have this emitter emitting from the beginning to this point in time, you can see that it's making copies and they kind of go off in a direction um, and they stay on the screen for the duration of this graphic and they're only fading at the end because of our, uh, our group fade that we have here at the top. Um, so if I select the emitter and let, let's change some things and kind of talk about what's going on here. Uh, it's by default shape is going to be a point so it starts at one point and emits in, in directions um, it's a little easier if you look at the heads up display so um, F7 will bring up the heads up display you can also click here that is the show hide HUD uh, giving you the key command there so um, if you look we have the emission birth rate this is how many um, particles are going to be created from that very first particle or uh, object that we created in the beginning of that circle. So we can crank that down and it'll give us less or crank it up and it'll give us more. Um, but let's go with uh, minimal for now. Uh, life is how long the uh, particles live in time. So the less they live, the you know, at, over time they're just going to kind of disappear. Um, so they, they stay on the screen for a specific time and then disappear from the screen after a specific time. We're going to make that the, du the duration of the time that I ha that we have uh, set up here. So let me escape. I'll crank this up here. You can also, if you look down here, the, uh, the heads up display also matches what's going on in the in inspector. So if I change the life, I'm going to make that here. I can type in here. Five. and that's how long our duration of our, our actually it's a little bit shorter than that our duration is uh, four seconds nine frames of the project so um, 
what we're going to do now is take the um, the emission range and change it a little bit so that we can point it in one direction. So if you look, this is the emission range and it's showing you where those particles are going to be moving. Um, this line here, this is kind of a curious thing that that uh, Motion 5 and other versions of Motion have. Um, this is the speed, like how fast they the particles move, but it doesn't affect the speed in your emitter controls. So if I'm changing this, I can also change the speed here and make them happen faster. And they kind of work in tandem with each other, but they they don't affect each other when you change them um, separately. So, you know, you can create some interesting effects by just moving these uh, the speed in the HUD and then the speed down in your uh, cell controls. So I'm going to slow this down. And we have this kind of emitting direction from a point. Um, the, the next thing I want to do is, is kind of clean this up a little bit um, specifically for this design. I'm not going to go through all of the, the different cell controls. You can see what they do when you have different objects, but like things like angle and spin, because it's a round object um, and we're not in, in 3D and more on that later, um, it, you, you really don't get the effect. So um, I will talk one more about one more thing, and that's going to be the scale and the opacity over time. So um, right now it's it's a, it has 100% opacity and it stays on the screen. Now if I, if I add another uh, block and change the opacity so that it goes to zero, over this amount of time it will f start and then those end particles were, will begin to fade. So you can see them fading there. Uh, and that has to do with their life so I can turn their life down and you know over time, over that four seconds they'll uh, fade out. Um, so I'm going to leave that turned on and I am going to adjust the scale. So we're going to make these particles much smaller. Like little very small particle light objects and uh, I'm, I'm going to change the scale random and uh, I'm just going to turn it up a little bit. If you look at the scale random it'll, it'll give some particles um, a larger scale and other particles uh, a smaller scale. But I just want to turn it up a little bit just to give them a little bit of a difference. And then I'm going to adjust the emission angle and um, the range to uh, make these particles move a, a little bit differently. So right now they start at this point and kind of go out in this cone shape here. What I want them to do is start at a line and hover up kind of like they're in zero gravity. So um, I'm going to change the emission shape and they, there's a variety of shapes but for the sake of time I'm just going to go with line and um, we're going to adjust the start point of the line and the end point of the line on the X axis so now if we look at it it kind of starts in one spot and it's emitting down it almost looks like snow right now so if I hit play it'll kind of snow down but I, I want it to float up so if I change my angle to 180 degrees, they're going to float up from this point. And uh, they're at a, a, a birth rate of 12. And I'm going to change that. I want the birth rate to be zero. So as of right now, nothing has been born. Um, I'm going to instead change my initial number and crank that up. So now they always stay on the screen. They're not constantly born. So the birth rate kind of changes how many um, new objects are created per second. Um, here I'm just going to turn this down a little bit. We want our initial number to be around 22 and um, they're kind of moving in the same direction at the same speed. So I'm going to change my speed randomness and turn this up a little bit so they kind of float apart from each other but they're going to start in the same area. So if I hit play they start and float up and some of them move because the speed randomness is so different so I'm going to change my speed randomness down a little bit I'm going to turn my speed 
up and my speed randomness down a little bit. And then I'm also going to turn this um, speed direction line down. And now they, they'll kind of hover, so it's a much more subtle effect, and they float up into space. And now, if I turn on my overlays, you can get to that in your show overlays menu and view, or it's uh, command and uh, the uh, slash key. So if I hit command slash, I can see all of my overlays, and I'm still title safe here. I'm going to drag this particle system down and kind of put it with everything that's going on. And I'm going to turn it off now, and we'll watch through. So I don't like where it starts. I'll go frame in so I can see it and turn it back on. And I could drag this, or I could use key command. So if I uh, command um, an arrow keys, that'll move in one pixel direction or another. And I'm also going to change the opacity over life. Uh, at the beginning of their life, I want the opacity to be down a little bit, so they're kind of see-through. So that's our effect so far. Uh, I'm going to scale down a little bit random-wise. And scale down, let's go to 3%. So make these a little bit smaller, a little bit more subtle, and um, turn them down all the way. That's me scrolling, three percent. So if we look at this, here's our particles kind of floating up from that line area, and they only fade out because of the opacity over life, and then at the end the, the whole graphic fades out because it's all in a group that has a fade behavior applied to it. Um, so that's kind of the gist of particles. Um, one more little thing. I'm going to close this emitter. And uh, if you look here down at the bottom, generate, this random seed here, it will change the way that the particles were emitted. So if I click the random seed to generate, it kind of changes where they originate and how they travel over life. Now. It seems random, but if you keep the random seed the same, these particles will stay in the same spot over their life every time. Um, you know, when you open up the project and, and uh, you know start start again, um, the, due to how the random seed is generated, these particles will always travel in the same exact direction. Um, and then one last thing, I'm going to move the emitter back in time, and then stretch it out a little bit so that they start a little bit higher up and actually I'm going to change that and move these down a little bit so if I bring back my overlays I'm going to drag that down just to kind of change how the particles behave they're, they're already spread apart they don't start so much in a line um, at the beginning like, like we had uh, set up here with the shape so that's kind of a little particle uh, tutorial to give you a very subtle effect with some particles floating in space um, behind uh, an already established graphic and um, I hope you enjoyed this one and uh, we're going to be coming out with another tutorial on using some masks and, and other objects to uh, achieve motion graphics effects and that's all for now